Okay, back in the car again. This is going to be Mega Squirt install. And there's videos here and there, and the instructions that come with Mega Squirt are very good, and you really do have to kind of read everything to know what you're doing. But I got the plug and play for the S13 SR20. I'm gonna try to show you all the setup and stuff I have to do sort of behind the scenes. Again, it's in the instructions, but you might wanna watch a video to really understand what's going on. First things, it's already verified that this ran uh, with the mass airflow plugged in there. Uh, on the last video, I had it too close to the turbo and it was breaking up at idle, which is to be expected, too much turbulence. I put a pipe out and it idled perfectly. Everything was good. So I know I'm starting with a good, a good running car and it's idling fine on the enthalpy tune. Um, I just want this mega squirt to be able to tune it myself for all this new craziness I did. So first thing, I added in a, a T connector. This hose runs to the map sensor. Um, so I have it and it goes into the firewall. Um, so this runs into the map sensor that's on the mega squirt itself. It's this little connector here. So the map's built in. And the whole point of that is to get rid of the mass airflow. I didn't want to uh, cut this pipe and put the mass airflow in and then end up doing a standalone one day anyway. So we're doing it now. So tee this connection in, it's supposed to tee into the fuel pressure regulator, but what I'm not sure is, uh, this is running to the boost solenoid. Um, I am not the solenoid, the boost solenoid's down there. That comes from, you know, tees into the wastegate line. Um, this, I don't know, reads your boost pressure, I guess, whatever, sends it to the computer. Um, so that's what this line does. And everything's real long right now, just to make sure that no leaks and craziness. So I'm hoping that this extra T doesn't create problems. I don't think so. This is more about a pressure sensor um, that happens like almost in instantaneously, like the speed of sound to the computer. So we're gonna hope that's correct. Uh, now we're over to the trigger wheel and I kind of got carried away before I'm like, crap, I gotta film. So all I have done is unplug it and taken off the two. Oh. This seal is no bueno. So I've just taken the, the two little bolts out. I'm gonna take this big one out and that should give us access to that trigger wheel. It should with this out of the way, it should just slide out of there. So let's find out. Okay, that was very scary. It took a lot of force to actually get that to loosen up. Okay, that can only go one way. Now this should... Okay. Now let's go. Yep. I mean this side up, it's more this side out. I'm gonna need two hands. And there we go. Easy pleasy. I'm not sure what to do about that. I mean, I think the whole point is to keep water from getting into your cam angle sensor. Oh boy, that is shot. Okay, simple as that. I put it back on as best I could. Definitely gonna have to order a replacement one of those because it's not fully sealing at the bottom or on the side, apparently. Hmm. All right, a little better. So, now for the next step. The factory enthalpy tuned ECU's out. Uh, here's my vacuum line that's gonna go to the map sensor. And of course the mega squirt. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put in, uh, this is the serial cable that mega squirt comes with. And this I bought in anticipation of needing to adapt to a computer, uh, to USB. So basically what I'm gonna be doing now is connecting this, hooking up the computer and getting, you know, making sure it can recognize um, and, and actually load up the bass tune. And I'll show you all that, but I need to do that before I even think about cranking or any of the other stuff. So this doesn't appear to bottom out 
like the factory one, I felt like I was cranking on that 10 millimeter way too hard. Um, so I kind of stopped and backed it out, but it doesn't seem to want to seat anymore. I don't know, I'm just leaving it. Okay, laptop connection, map vacuum line. Uh, I've got this hooked up. Uh, so now I'm gonna get the laptop and see what happens. Oh, and plug the battery back in because I unplugged it because, you know, electronics. Okay, we're gonna see what happens. Oh, so, so it comes with this stick. On that stick is the tune for your car, sorta. So you put this in your computer and you run the setup and that is gonna install Tuner Studio and the logging software. So you gotta do that first. So I, I did that last night. Um, also, when it installs onto your computer, whoops, under, cause I'm like, where is the fricking file for this tune? And, and this isn't it, it's actually uh, under documents and there will be, well not original cause I made a backup just in case. <laughs> It installs this under Documents Tuner Studio Projects, and then here under 1.3, uh, that is the baseline tune for the SR20. Um, so that took me a little bit to figure out. I'm like, what the heck? Did they forget to put it on the stick? No, nah, it's part of the installation. So let's bring up Tuner Studio, see what happens. All right. So like I said, I've already been already been in. Um, Let's name this SR20 DE. Well, you gotta get all the numbers right. It's hard one handed. Version 2. I played around with version 1. I don't know if it actually saved it. So, oh. So I'm gonna power on the car. Just powered on the car. Things are happening, I guess. So let's detect. Okay, no controller found. Cancel, cancel. So I gotta figure out how to get this to talk to the ECU first and foremost. So I'm gonna pause. So this is just a computer thing, but uh, when I went to device manager, this didn't even say ports, com, and LPT. And I actually found a, a write up on how to do this. It was showing like an exclamation point on the USB port. Uh, I had to go here, ftdichip.com, blah, 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 and download for Windows Desktop. I tried doing the 64-bit one, and I don't really know how to execute it, but there was a setup executable, executable, and I clicked that, installed it, and then bam, when I went to um, back to Device Manager, it would show me actual this and USB Serial Port Com 3. And something's important about it being... Uh, one, two, three, or four. If it's higher than than four, it's not good. You're supposed to change it. But I'm three, so I'm leaving it alone. So then I went back into, you know, after that, and I'm like, how do I get this dang thing to connect? So I went, did the same thing we did before, new project, um, SR20 DT version two, and then I hit detect under the firmware. It detected all this. I don't know if I'm supposed to, oh God. See, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just leaving it where it was and clicking accept. Um, so SR20DT version two, that's the directory that it's gonna go to and then they're detected and blah, 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 blah. So now let's go next, see what happens. Uh, configure center. So, I mean, I have an oxygen sensor, but I do not have it wired up yet. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm sure it'll read zero because it won't be connected. Can you command it? Port status. I'm gonna leave all of this. And then, we're gonna go next. I don't know. So we're leaving everything. So successful, I like successful. I'm not even gonna test, we're just going next. Next, 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 next. That's kind of sick. <laughs> what the heck? All right, we're just gonna leave it. Finish. 
Offline. Ah, there we go. There we go, baby. Now we're getting somewhere. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, <clears throat> since put in the cam angle sensor trigger wheel, I'm gonna set these up now based on what it says. So ignition options, wheel decoder. All right, now I'm gonna set these. Uh, I mean, there's what it is and there's what it's gonna be. Okay, everything's changed. Basically the number of uh, teeth on the trigger wheel, number of missing teeth. The uh, It says to set the initial offset at 60 degrees um, and uh, set the timing to fixed Oops, fixed at uh, 15 degrees. Uh, and I changed cranking dwell to A, cranking advanced degrees 10, um, nominal dwell, spark duration, and spark hardware latency. Whatever all that means. I changed it to exactly what it said. And apparently this says it needs a uh, power cycle. Settings change that require a power cycle. And then confusingly, in the instructions that come on the uh, thumb drive, it says uh, it left everything original except for, oh no, that's not true. This just appears to be an old interface. All right, here in the general setup, it does have uh, most things how it's showed on the paper. Okay, so I'm gonna burn these. And then close. Burned all data, great. All right, there's gonna have to have a power cycle, but that's okay, because now we're gonna do fuel settings. Uh, we need to do uh, basic load settings. Okay, there it is, under basic load settings, engine and sequential settings, uh, required fuel, uh, 750cc injectors on a 2000cc engine, four cylinders, and a target air fuel of 14.7. So, we're going to OK that. Only went to 4.5. I hope that's OK. I'm not touching anything else. OK, I got some supplies to very rudimentarily install this intake air temperature sensor into the car. First, I'm doing the plug. Uh, so, I'm actually using some of the supplied wire for the, because it's the right diameter and all, um, that was for the serial connectors. And also, this is the, so it's basically the optional serial connection for, uh, so let's see, this far right one, and then the third one over, these are for the intake air uh, sensor, this middle one is the oxygen, the wideband oxygen sensor input. And these two are like relay uh, switched 12 volts. So basically I have a relay that powers the fans and it's on a switch on the dash. But at some point I want to hook it up to one of these triggers and set the computer to say when it reads 170 degrees or whatever, kick the fans on. So it'll send 12 volts here. That'll trip the, the relay to turn the fans on. And then it'll shut it off at, I don't know. Uh, oh, and I said that backwards. Like, turn it on at 200, shut it off at 170, you know, whatever. Um, but those are settings inside the computer, so I don't have to do fans anymore. Um, but those are all the ones, looking at the diagram, these are all the ones I'm ever going to need. There's all these other plugs. Um, and these are numbered. Uh, this camera's not going to let you see, but on the back side of this, there's the numbers that correspond with the, the wires in the manual. Um, so I just hooked up all the ones I think I will possibly need. And that way it's there because uh, you end up putting it together. Um, but then I had all these extra wires because I'm not going to use the rest. I'm not going to put them in if I'm not going to use them. And that being said, I don't actually know how you're supposed to use these because they don't, they don't actually fit these pins. Like it's too loose. That's not making a connection. But I think that these are the two wires that are supposed to go to the intake air temperature sensor which I have very haphazardly uh, bolted on here with a washer and a gasket um, and threaded it into the pipe. Uh, I'm going to have to order a flange and get it welded on, hopefully, or maybe I'll have to JB weld it again. But 
this clearly has these specific fittings. Because you crimp these and they slide down in there. They can only go one way after you crimp on a wire. So I, I don't know. So I'm going to do that again to here. And I'll have two wires and they are going to go and connect to the serial connection on uh, 20 and 22. Well, I'm not sure how they were intended to be connected, but I just did it the old school way. I know with some solder and heat shrink. So let's plug it up. Okay. And take your temperature sensor hooked up. Uh, the wires, it's just haphazard for now because we're just trying to get it to run, clean it up later. Uh, piping's hooked back up, blow valve hooked back up. I mean, I think we're about ready to try a crank. Okay, now that we have an intake air temperature sensor, we have to go, uh, so unplugged in, USB, power's on. Uh, so now we're gonna go to calibrate thermosistor tables. Air temperature sensor. Now we go to common sensor values. It's a GM. Uh, it said leave the bias resistor value at 2490. And write to controller. Write complete, close. Okay, I absolutely do not have my hopes up, but we're gonna try a crank. Because I think I've, I hope, I've tried everything that I'm supposed to do. So, let's give her some fuel. Let's see what happens. Holy cow, almost. Well, that's cool. Let's try it again. Little throttle. Ooh. I just found the wheel speed was on crank wheel and not cam wheel. Maybe that has something to do with it. Ah, I didn't record it because I didn't expect it to run. Okay, finally a breakthrough. Jeez. Uh, I couldn't get my timing light to work. It's really making me mad. Um, and I even tried that. But what I ended up having to do was rig up this that I placed on the, whoo, it's hot now, because it's actually idling. Place that on the spark plug, stick this in and there until it touches stripped off a little and then well make sure that that is directional so it would be this way um and put your inductive clamp over that exposed thing i tried it on the the wire itself still nothing i'm like this thing is broke uh nope stripped off some of the shielding and boom finally got timing had the timing light to work in order to get the timing i was playing around with all kinds of stuff I moved, you know, there's a lot I don't understand. I'm learning, but there's a lot I really don't get. Ended up at 120, you know, so I started increasing the angle. Um, I mean, I, I feel like I should be doing the trigger angle, but it, it, this is what I'm supposed to be on, toothed wheel, not anything else. So I just stuck with that. And I kept raising and raising and raising and raising this, trying to get the... 15 degree mark to be in line. So the 15, oh, ironically, the 15 degrees were flashing about here. It's my silver mark on the 15 degree. And I kept turning it and it like sort of moved to here. And that's about as far as it would get no matter what I set. So I ended up loosening up the cast and turning it all the way. And I 
it put it just a little farther beyond and I backed it up a hair and I got it right at 15 degrees. And she's idling great. So now I can actually start doing the rest. Um, I did start immediately. I mean, geez, I've got, you know, big turbo, free flowing exhaust, blah, 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 intercooler piping, you know, all that BS. I did actually have to bump up my fuel table, uh, really just for idle. Um, but I highlighted the whole entire table and I brought the percentage up quite a bit. This was in the 30s or something. So we're no longer going to be on fixed timing. We're going to be on use table. Now it gets scary. What's up YouTube fam? Uh, it's been a little while since I started the Megasquirt project on the S14. Um, and the last part of the video you saw was me trying to figure out everything and learn. And this will be everything I've learned and everything I did wrong. Uh, so I'll walk you through the settings on my Tuner Studio and what made the car run well, uh, what stage it's in, and really what it took to get there. Um, as you can also see, we are no longer just on the concrete down the open. We have a shop. And that will be the next video. Uh, I'm going to go through what it took, how the process worked, how much it cost to get the shop. And so pretty excited to do that. Excited to have a shop. I wanted one for like 20 years and now here it is. So super cool. But for now, let's dive into the Mega Squirt. We'll pull it up on the computer and uh, show you what it did to make this run really awesome. And not to have to go to the tuner every time I want to change something, I can just do it all myself. And uh, it's still not 100%. I'm dialing stuff in every day, learning stuff every day, but let's get to what got it to this point so far. Okay, I have the paid version of Mega Squirt now because it does the tune analyze live and that was pretty huge it was worth 70 bucks and really helped me dial in the the volumetric efficiency table but for now what i'm going to do is go through pretty much each setting and show you what all i did um i might have to explain some things as i go like the required fuel basically oh, it does this sometimes it'll i'm not going to mess with it but you put in your engine size, the CCs, the injector size, blocking the camera. You put in the engine size and CCs, number, uh, the size of the injectors, um, CCs per minute, and all the rest of the stuff is pretty much what came with the factory uh, tune. The once you do the required fuel, you put all those settings in. It automatically generates this. 4.4 millisecond uh, required fuel rate. Uh, ignore this because every time you pull it up, it kind of might just do whatever the hell it wants, but I've already set it and it's correct. So that's it for that. General settings. Let's see if I changed anything. This all looks pretty, pretty factory. Uh, let's skip fuel settings going to this is kind of the big one. Uh, when you're setting up your dizzy, it has to be toothed wheel, uh, falling edge, going high, wasted spark, ignition one, blah, blah, blah. All those are pretty much how it came. You have to set it to a single two or a single wheel with missing tooth, 24 teeth. Two of them are missing. And uh, this was the big one that I showed on, on the uh, last section about 125 degrees. So here's the biggest thing. If the car's not cranking, you have in like a... This is a plug and play setup, so it should be pretty decent to run right off the rip. And throw these numbers all around. Go anywhere from, it says start at like 60 or something, plus or minus 10. If you're not even getting close, throw it up another 45 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, and like keep going. I mean, don't go over 360, but play around in there until you get something that fires and idles. And once it does, once it idles, 
start playing with this number and even if you have to adjust your cast to get it like I did to get it right because me changing this number incrementally didn't actually get it into the range where I was running 15 degrees um, like here timing for fixed advance I couldn't get it to 15 degrees without actually adjusting the cast so I had that as good as I could and again I was bumping up like 130 120 trying to get something to, to line this up with 15 degrees and I couldn't get it to work um, until I adjusted the cast anyway I locked it in 15 degrees and then put it back on use table and uh, let her rip um, I did I think I changed this nominal dwell uh, down to two milliseconds so your nominal dwell is the base dwell time before battery voltage correction typically three to four milliseconds and it was on um, it was on three to begin with I think but uh, judging by some things I read I settled on two and, and it's been fine there uh, one millisecond spark duration yep that's all great so then you have some other big ones that are going to be just the camera. Uh, cranking RPMs, I think it starts around 3350. Uh, my car generally cranks at 250-ish. Um, so I raised it up a little bit. And basically this is the point that the car is cranking at like 250 and then when it catches and fires that RPM will go up over 500. And once it's over 500, that tells the ECU that it's out of cranking and now into the running mode. Um, that's, so that's not super important to just you can't put it at 200 or it'll immediately think that the car cranked and hasn't um, it's not actually running yet it's still in cranking mode um, well let me see what's on fuel injector dead time injector dead time was funny for me I went by the numbers that I got on the 50 injector like came with a, a flow rate sheet and it was saying at a given voltage, like 13.2 milliseconds, I, I calculated that at about 0.5 milliseconds. So I had 0.5 milliseconds in there. But what it was doing was taking my fuel table and running the numbers all over the freaking board. Like these would be super high um, and it would have these... It would have these crazy, like this super high peak here and then down and then up. When I change that milliseconds back to what's a little more kind of what you would think, like these are high impedance injectors, so it's around 0.9. Um, and I think the factory was set at one millisecond, you know, factory tune, when I say factory. Um, that was more appropriate than the 0.5 milliseconds. So I'm not sure what I don't understand or what, or what, but the 0.5 that I calculated from the sheet, and I'll show a picture of that, of that flow rate chart so you can see what I mean. Um, it'll be offset, uh, the offset number. Like, it didn't work. The numbers were all over the board, and it was like jumping, you know, the, these numbers, these fuel, as, as the RPMs are moving through, and this is, you know, the amount of volumet volumetric efficiency, the amount of fuel, basically, that it's dumping in. For a given RPM and, and you know kilopascals, different pressure, it was just really highs and really lows and just all over the board. This is smoother, cleaner, uh, it runs better than ever. And I did some changes. That's why I see a couple peaks in there that I'm still still ironing out. But it's running great right now. Um, so I'm going to leave that pretty much alone. I did modify some of some of the, you know, where like in cruise, I wanted to be about 14.7, but at idle, I want it to be like 14s. Um, usually idles around 40 to 50, which I feel is kind of high, but, um, you know, I wanted to be kind of rich on idle. Um, that's just my preference. And then working up into, uh, like, f uh, let's say 200, that's like what 14, yeah, 14.5 PSI. You know, I want that low 11s. Um, but I'm not actually there yet. I've only tuned up to 10 PSI and I'm still working to now boost it up to, you know, I'll dial in the 14. I'm gonna change this whole map, you know, extrapolate here and move it up into the, uh, I'll do a max of 20 PSI because we'll probably run it at 18 if we're like really trying to get on it, you know, really trying to hot dog it. But that's all gonna be low 11s 
up above and I really should extrapolate a few one above this anyway, but I'm gonna make sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, I did do some overrun fuel cut when it's uh, greater than 1800 RPMs and the manifold absolute pressure drops down below 40. So when you're like, and actually, oh, I need to change that. Um, so I actually probably, since I idle at like 50, I probably want to change this to when I'm below 50, let's say five kilopascals and above 1800 RPM. So basically when you let off the gas and you know, your throttle position sensor is less than 2% um, and it's warmed up, coolant temperature's higher than 150. Um, after two seconds, it'll go to overrun fuel cut. So it'll cut fuel all together. So you won't get those like burr, 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 burr. You know, it'll just and just get real smooth. Um, I don't think you can actually change this any less. Oh, I was wrong. Oh, that's beautiful. So now I'm gonna set it, see, I keep doing all these changes and trying to see how it goes. But after one second, it'll go into overrun fuel cut, cut the fuel and just coast down um, until it gets to uh, return to fuel when the RPMs are less than 1500. So when you're getting close to idle, then it should kick the fuel back on so you don't, you know, so the car just doesn't die. Um, and then ego controls, your air fuel controls are gonna return after um, a second. Um, so I was pretty happy with that. Ego controls, so I have the AEM, I think it's an AEM wideband in there. Uh, single wideband, that is actually, so I wired, let's look. So there it is, AEM wideband. So what I did, and I don't have this permanently installed yet, but I used the factory plug. So. That's where your narrow band O2 sensor would go that I've plugged off. And then there was a uh, cable that ran over here and plugged into this. And so I hooked the wires from the wide band that's down on the like dump pipe of the exhaust. And I wired it into the factory narrow band connection and then told the ECU So then told the ECU that what it's sensing is a single wideband. So there we go, single wideband. You can do dual and all kinds of whatever, but so single wideband on the local port and then just some various settings about coolant and, you know, RPMs and stuff like that. But you can kind of look at those and figure it out from there. Uh, but that was pretty important. Wideband control is set to a PID algorithm, uh, proportional integral derivative uh, control. And those are just the settings on how to make it happy. So that's ego control. Not a lot of these really have to be messed with. Uh, I have not turned on knock sensor settings yet, but I'm going to, to protect the engine. Uh, that's gonna be one of the next things I do. Um, but I'll do a lot of tinkering in the startup idle. I mean, like I showed you this already. Um, priming pulse, that's when you first key on and your pump primes, it gives a little squirt of extra fuel in there. Uh, prime pulse width, depending on how hot it is. Just a little blast of extra fuel um, after the pump primes. I uh, should do that with key on. I have individual switches for the uh, for the fuel pump and the power of the car on, like the key. So I generally turn the fuel pump on to pressurize the rail, then turn on the power to the car so I can actually have some fuel to do that priming pulse. Cranky pulse. Okay, I had to refilm this because this is actually my current cranking pulse percentages. Um, if you notice here, that's where it was before, tapering down to 100%. Um, and actually, something about with larger injectors and the possibility of dead times being off, uh, it, you really don't need much fuel um, on crank. Uh, and clearly, because this, the car's starting better than ever with it dropped down this far. It, uh, you know, I was kind of flooding the engine trying to get it to crank. 
and this is much better. The just big injectors, large pulse width, um, you know, it putting enough fuel in there to start. Now, if you're like factory injectors, 370cc, you might want to keep it at the standard um, curve that was there, but this worked for this case. After start enrichment, um, I don't think I really, I mean, I did monkey with this a little, but it's another percentage adder for the amount of fuel um, after the car starts and goes into run mode. So it's changing the, the percentage of extra fuel as the car is warming up. But notice when the car is warm, you know, 165, 170. I mean, that's this car runs cold. It's usually around 165, 175 when it's running um, at, at full temp. Uh, it's only doing a 4% uh, after start enrichment. Um, but it's much different when you're like at 70 degrees. That's 29% extra fuel. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> That's after start enrichment. Uh, after start enrichment taper. You know, that's probably not something you have to change too much, but you can see my settings. Uh, da -da -da. Warm up enrichment. For 99% of engines, warm up must have 100% in the final row. And, well, mine does, I think. So once the car is up to 151.3, there's a, it's a hundred percent. There's no more extra fuel for a warm up enrichment because it doesn't need to warm up. It is warm. That's kind of what you consider your warm up. I mean, it might change that to 155, but really that's fine. Um, idle controls, still getting this dialed in, but I'm getting better. Um, so I have it set uh, pulled pulse width modulated valve, something like that, two or three wire. Um, pretty sure that's what's on this car because that's what's working for mine. Put it in closed loop mode. Uh, and that is important to go ahead and really try and get those, you know, try to get your idle dialed in. Crank to run taper time. I had this at 10 seconds. I think it came factory at like two. I put it at five because I'm still playing with it. The valve mode, I read somewhere somebody says, oh, I didn't know Nissan valves were inverted. I thought they were all regular, but uh, this says most valves work with 100% closed. A few work in the opposite direction. So I haven't gotten any confirmation on that yet. But the car is running pretty good, or idling pretty good like this. Uh, run around before start. I have that off. I don't know why. Uh, 140 or 153 hertz. Uh, says don't touch that for whatever reason. So I didn't. Let's see. Idle control. Where are we? Idle cranking duty steps. So I literally just changed this back to factory. I had it set at some different stuff I was playing around with and I haven't tried these settings yet. So this is just about, it's almost exactly factory settings. And I'm hoping it, you know, starts a little better. So the idle cranking duty is, is it's gonna like give you extra air. Um, it's gonna give you extra air. It's kind of like putting your foot on the throttle, you know, pumping the gas to get extra air in there while you're while you're cranking the car so like if it's having if the car starts better when you're like pumping the throttle this can compensate for that by using the the idle valve to add extra air where you need to get the car running so this is probably one of the biggest things for getting a just a broom start you know no like cha 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 this car cha 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 is a little bit um but it, it starts up so reliably every time I haven't messed with this until now. I just changed this back to factory to see if it helps. If it doesn't help, I'm going to go back to my previous tune um, to where, because um, I saved after changing these things. Again, like I said, a uh, ton of uh, work in progress stuff. Closed loop idle settings. So here we have idle valve closed duty and idle valve open duty. So these numbers are kind of important. And I think you, I think you get to that in here, idle valve. So output test mode for the idle valve. So you can run the car and you can input numbers. So you start with like zero and you, you keep changing it until it starts to affect the idle, like when you go up. And so whatever happened, mine at 20, it started to affect the idle. And I can't remember if it made it jump or something like that, or maybe it increased the idle. So maybe nothing, I don't, th yeah, I think the idle was sitting kind of still, 
And then as I raised this number, and I think I had to keep burning it, I don't remember, but as I raised this number, kept testing it, it got to a point where 20, which is the number here, started to affect the idle. So I knew that was the, the low, the closed duty that I needed. And then I kept raising this number and the idle kept increasing, 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 increasing until I got to 80. After 80, it stopped increasing. So I knew that that was the open duty cycle. So then I had my range using this output test mode idle valve to plug into here. Um, I mean, you could try it if you have an SR20, but you know, it probably would behoove you to, you know, test it yourself. Maybe all the valves are a little bit different. Um, so then I'm not totally sure about these initial, you know, use initial value table. I'm not totally sure, but I wanted this to look at coolant level. See the coolant temperature, I mean, to make its predictions on how it was going to adjust the idle because that's, you know, if it's warmed up, it doesn't need to, it could just go straight to normal. But if it's, you know, below running temperature, then it might need to increase it a little bit. Um, I'm still playing with closed loop gain. I bumped this up a little bit and it actually helped. The idle was hunting a little bit. I also had some uh, boost leak I'd fixed. So it was hunting a little bit and I bumped it up from like 500 to this just arbitrary 895, just slid it a little. Um, that seemed to help. Uh, PID delays, run to crank taper times, you know, all this is a product of me watching videos and reading things for the reason that I chose these and I can't give you specific examples now, but at least you can see uh, what I have. Because uh, when I was when I was doing this, all I wanted was somebody that had an SR20 that did this to to get some kind of idea of what settings to choose. Even give me a baseline. I can I can modify from there, but you know I just needed some kind of guidance. So that's the whole point of this video. Um, I found a lot of stuff on Miatas for this that a lot of it crossed over. But you know you want to know your car. Uh, close up idle target RPMs. So I have it set, you know, normally it's Florida. It's like always 70 degrees in the mornings. Um, so it's a right or a little 1400 or so. Oh yeah, 70 degrees, 1400. Uh, so in the morning I want it to idle at 1400. And so this is going to use the closed loop idle, like the PID algorithm, to try and hold the car at 1400 and 70 degrees. And then it will taper down until it gets to, uh, you know... At 155, I kind of consider that warmed up. Um, I mean, it's got 160 degree thermostat, so uh, that's where I want it to be 800. So all of these are just trying to keep it at 800, up to 220 degrees. That's, that is one thing I changed, is I moved it way out to the highest temperature that it would possibly see. I mean, 220 or, you know, not doing so hot. Um, but I want it, I still want it to hold the idle at 800, at 220. So I extended these out a little bit and it might just extrapolate if your last point was here or here. It might just extrapolate out and keep the same 800 for the rest, but I didn't want to chance it, so I added, you know, I changed the points to continue it out. Uh, that's closed loop idle target RPM. Um, closed loop idle initial value. So again, these are the idle valve duty percentage numbers, and I still have to, this is one thing I have not played with at all. So this is something new I have to look up and learn. Um, but I mean, like I said, the car's running good, so I, I keep just doing things to fine tune, but I haven't messed with this yet, so you can't go by me. Uh, da, da, da. Well, advanced settings, I haven't touched that. Now, acceleration enrichment, I'm still working on, and it is quite involved. Okay, so once again, within the time of filming the last video to this, I'm scrapping the old footage because I've learned new things. And basically what I've learned is, so this generally idles around uh, 40 to 50 at 800. So 62V numbers. Uh, for your tip in throttle, um, you really want it to be almost double. Like, so when you rev, 
it's going to shoot up to, you know, 90 kPa, somewhere in there. So notice that's at 120, where my idle is at 62. And that's really what you want. You want a big dump of extra fuel for this range here. Uh, and you want to get this VE table as close as you can to perfect, and then just use acceleration enrichment to kind of fine-tune, to add a little extra pulse width of, of fuel. Um, and I don't actually have this curve finished here. I just started doing this, so there's still more to come. But getting this, adding this about twice the VE numbers, roughly, really made a huge difference on just the, the blipping on the throttle, like when you're about to take off from a stop sign, made a huge difference. And then the acceleration enrichment is going to take care of the rest. And this is my current acceleration enrichment settings. Uh, I, I slid the slider all the way over, so I'm only using TPS-based um, acceleration enrichment. Maybe I'll go back to a little percentage of map-based, but the, the throttle position happens quicker so your butterfly opens shoots the air comes rushing into the intake manifold then the map sensor can recognize that pressure difference but tps happens first so i'm doing everything based on throttle position sensor at the moment and these numbers are not fine-tuned yet these millisecond adders for the uh, tps dot is the rate of change uh, over a second um, so it'll be, like if you opened your throttle from no throttle to 100% throttle over one second, that would be a 100% TPS dot. Um, so if you do it uh, in a half a second from zero to 100% throttle, that's 200%. So you get the point, and here's the whole curve, and, and generally they say the curve should have this kind of uh, plateauing effect here. Uh, now it's just dialing in the milliseconds to get things correct. Uh, you can see the numbers down here. Still tweaking a lot of this, but this is running so good so far. Um, but again, the biggest thing was getting your VE table dialed in first. Um, you know, just uh, disable acceleration enrichment altogether while you're working on your VE table. And you should get it running good just off of that. Um, maybe change these uh, the TPS dot threshold make those numbers huge that way you can never um, actually engage acceleration enrichment and uh, then work on your VE table by itself and then go back and, and add this in uh, Tune Analyze Live let me get these out of here Tune Analyze Live shows you this screen and you can start your auto tune. You can make sure to, like I have these cells idle and, and the lower regions blocked off. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I only want it to, you know, I want it to be hard to change the cells because I've got it dialed in. I don't want some little fluke to go changing my numbers big time. So I have it hard to change. Uh, I can set the maximum number of values that it will actually alter a cell, which 20 is a ton. Um, and it won't even start auto-tuning until after 155 degrees, because I set that, because that's my, you know, what I think it should be. Minimum, um, not minimum. uh,
think of much else that's huge to tell you to get yours going. Um, I haven't even messed with the ignition table yet because really you need to be on the dyno for that. Um, so I still have a lot to learn, but hopefully this will help somebody trying to get started or trying to, you know, debate rather to pull the trigger or not. Um, there's going to be a whole bunch of things I've missed, like calibrating your throttle position sensor. Uh, you need to do that. Uh, you're going to want to cal calibrate your coolant temperature sensor. And this is based off the SR20s, uh, the resistance. Uh, you can actually calculate this by checking the resistance across the two pins and putting it in a boiling water. Or, you know, it's 86 degrees. This is the resistance right now. You know, you can calculate all that yourself. Um, air temperature sensor, that's the GM, General Motors one that came with the Mega Squirt. And you just select common sensor values, GM, bloop, and it populates. Um, you know, easy stuff. But one of the many things you have to go through to double check. But yeah, totally worth it. Totally budget in the extra 70 bucks to get the uh, registered version so you can do the analyze, um, analyze live because that's huge. Yeah, you could look at your, you know, you could look at your freaking log and try and figure it all out yourself but the analyze live gets you so close for and you know you change one thing you know i took out excel enrichment and ran the analyze tune and it changed all kinds of stuff in here now i'm going to add back in the excel enrichment with more conservative numbers because it won't need as much because the base fuel map will be better off all kinds of stuff like that so th that's about it it's a long video but it's a lot i mean i've spent hours countless countless hours of researching and looking up and learning how to uh, tune cars, basically, and very glad.